St. Petersburg might not be at the top of your Florida bucket list like Miami or Orlando, but it's one of the hottest places to visit in the Sunshine State. Home to an amazing food scene. Oh my God. Some of the best beaches in the world, a vibrant art community, serene parks, oh gosh, it's so cool. and tasty beer. It won't be a hidden gem for long. As a born and raised local, I've seen St. Pete transform over the past few decades. It is growing like crazy. And while this change isn't without challenges, there's no denying it's special here. We recently returned to St. Pete buying a home in the quirky neighborhood of Gulfport after traveling full time for six years. And today we're sharing what we think is the best of St. Pete. From a few of the top spots you can't miss as a visitor to local secrets most people don't know about. Get ready to discover the magic of St. Pete. Grand Central District through the edge and all the way to downtown is absolutely booming in St. Pete right now. It's crazy to see how this area has transformed when I was growing up. This was not an area you really hung out in. It was very transient. Most of the businesses were completely shut down. And now it is like the place to be. It is wild. If you're coming to this area, you can walk down Central. It's a super cute area filled with shops. There's lots of bars and restaurants. But you can also hop on a bike that you can rent or one of the scooters, which is a really fun way to get around. If you want to search your morning office some delicious coffee, you have to come to Bandit. It's right in that really cute little area of Central Avenue. I ended up getting one of their seasonal lattes. It's actually tea, lavender, red rose, jasmine, orange zest, lemon zest. And then I got a Thai tea donut. Like, what? This looks so good. Dennis got a Nashville hot chicken buttermilk biscuit with a collard green aioli. It's been so long since I've had a donut. I'm talking years, guys. We don't need things like this very often. It's got some kick, but it doesn't melt your face like it actually would in Nashville. <laughs> this is so good. The donut's very good, but I should have gotten this. Mm. The city is known for its art scene. It's always had a thriving art community. Gulfport, where we live, has like a really hippie art vibe. You have tons of art museums and galleries in the downtown area as well. It's also home to the Dali Museum, which is one of our favorite in the entire city. It's an absolute must if it's your first time coming here. We've been many times. It has a really cool, like surrealist experience where it takes you into the 3D world of Dali, and it has some of his best and most famous works. There's also the Chihuly Museum, which is really stunning, but the street art here is next level. Every year they hold a mural festival called Shine, where they bring in some of the top muralists from across the world for this huge competition. So there's constantly new murals going up around the city that are just awesome. There is a walking tour I think you can take, but we'll have a link to a map that shows you all of the murals from this festival. It's a perfect picture opportunity, but it's just awesome to admire all this artwork. We're gonna be taking you to the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art, which is one of the newer museums in St. Pete. The James Museum was founded in 2018 by St. Pete native Tom James of the Raymond James Company and his wife Mary James. Captivated by the beauty of the West, they began collecting artwork that celebrated the history, wildlife, and culture of this region. The James Museum showcases over 400 works of art from their collection, ranging from sculptures, paintings, and jewelry from prominent modern Native American, Chinese, and American artists. Tuesdays are a great day to visit because tickets are only $10 from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. But the James Museum is worthy of a visit any day of the week. Maybe shark. Oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. Where was it? It just got right over here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <gasps> I think one of the best parts about being in St. Pete is its proximity to the water. You have gorgeous beaches on the west side and then on the east side you have access to the bay. There's this like long promenade that you can walk and bike and you have access to the pier which is like super family friendly. They just completely revamped it. it has splash pads, bars. It's just like a really fun place that's cool for both tourists and locals. Sometimes on the weekends we'll go down there and let the kids play. We'll just drink a beer and chill. You can go on boating tours from downtown. There's a marina here that you can like hop on guided tours. They do sunset cruises. We just saw someone paddling on like a tiki bar thing. This is the area that I think people see and they're like, oh my gosh, St. Pete. 
In Strab Park in downtown, there's these two really iconic banyan trees. They've been here forever. We actually have an old postcard that we used at our wedding of these banyan trees in downtown St. Pete from like the 1940s, which is really cool. I think it's even from the 20s. Do you think it was that old? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. So these have been here forever. If you're looking for them, they're really, really beautiful. And also the strip down here has a lot of great restaurants. They're not our favorite necessarily, but we don't have time in this video to show you all of our top picks. So we're gonna write a blog post about what we think are the best restaurants in St. Pete. I will say across from the banyan trees is a banging gelato shop. There's so many fantastic parks to visit in St. Pete area. Fort DeSoto is probably the most famous. It's a fantastic spot for RVers. If you're coming here and looking for an amazing Florida paradise getaway, there's lots of water activities, boating, pier, gorgeous beaches. We have a whole video dedicated to camping in Fort DeSoto. But today we're taking you to one of our favorites, which is Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. This is on the south side of St. Pete. I don't think a lot of people that are visiting here know about it, but for locals, this is one of our favorite parks. We've seen so many alligators here, at least 10 to 15 little babies all along the shore. And then we just saw a mama alligator cruising by right under the skyline. It was beautiful. If you come to Lake Megory Island, this is your best chance of seeing alligators. I love this park so much. There's so much to do here. They have an aviary where they've rescued birds that were injured in the wild and likely wouldn't have survived. They keep here, you can see a bald eagle. They have kestrels, barred owls. There's also loads of trails for exploring. I think there's up to like five miles of trails that you can do. And they have a small education center inside to educate you on the natural wildlife that's here and how this lake even came to be. There is an entrance fee to get in here, but you're helping support the conservation of this beautiful green space in the city. It is very warm today though. Not gonna lie, the Young Sun Hero right now is our Unbound Merino wool t-shirts. It's a lifesaver in the Florida heat. We've been low-key obsessed with Merino wool clothing for years now because it's perfect for travelers and for outdoor enthusiasts. It's quick drying, it doesn't wrinkle, it can also be insulating and breathable, so it's perfect for hot and cold climates. There are a ton of Merino brands out there, but they're not all created equal. I like Unbound Merino because they use 100% Merino in each of their garments, zero synthetic fibers. They also use mule sink free wool, which is super important because there's zero animal cruelty involved in the shirt that you put. Since wool is naturally antimicrobial, the bad odor causing bacteria doesn't grow inside of the fabric itself. Honestly, I hate wearing cotton now because after 10 minutes of wearing a cotton shirt, I smell like a dumpster fire. Mm -hmm. I religiously wear a Merino shirt for up to five days before changing it and I stay odor free. We're really picky about what goes in our closet. We lived in an RV for six years. We travel all the time. We need something that is versatile and quality. You could dress it up or down. They have all different types of clothing from workout gear, dresses, t-shirts, tank tops, even polos. If you're ready to join the odor free club, make sure to shop Unbound Merino using the link in the video description below. Now let's go cool off and grab some beer. Just what I needed. We are at Grand Central Brewing, which is one of our favorite breweries in St. Pete. St. Pete's kind of become known for its microbrewery scene. There's so many different craft beer places that you can visit from Green Bench, which is probably the first and most famous in the Edge District. It's awesome. They even have a place next door called Web City that specializes in sours. It's like adult only. It's a great vibe. But we really like the vibes, the beers, everything all around at Grand Central. It's like our go-to. They call themselves a logger house. They have a great outdoor space where you can play bocce ball. They, you can play what's the cornhole, that's the hut game. Yeah, so it's always a good time here. But if you're into beer, I highly recommend trying some of the different breweries around town. We're gonna have a blog post about our favorite breweries in St. Pete so that you can check out some of the spots we're not showing you in this vlog, including our very favorite one. Gotta check it out to find out what it is. Cheers, cheers.
just down the street from Grand Central is one of our favorites called Trophy Fish. I don't think it's super popular by tourists, but we love it. It's kind of hidden away behind these sea grapes, has a coastal vibe, and everything here is super, super fresh. Today they have mahi and red snapper. You're kind of just getting whatever comes off the boat that day. I mean, being a beach town, like you have to come to St. Pete and try the seafood. It's what we're known for here. And if you come for happy hour, you can get one dollar oysters. Not super briny, it's extra clean, the best sip of seawater you ever had. If you're from the south, you know what a hush puppy is. It's like deep fried corn dough. This one has jalapeno inside, and they have a chimichurri sauce that goes with it. It smells so good, it smells so good. Mm. Ceviche. Wow, it's super citrusy, like mango, pineapple, cucumber, it's really fresh. You don't get like any of the seafood flavor, which is really nice. Mai Tai. It's like the traditional Mai Tai, but they put a Creole spice in it and pistachios. Their cocktails are actually how we discovered this place. This is like one of our favorite spots to come, like early dinner drinks. And then we finally had the food one time and we were like, this is really good. How do you like finish my It is gone. Oh my God. If you're looking for an awesome St. Pete spot, this is it. If you're visiting St. Pete from fall to spring, you need to head to the Saturday morning market. It's one of the largest farmer's markets in the entire Southeast. It's where we shop for our produce and our meats every week. It's awesome. But the reason we're bringing you here today is to get what we think is the best breakfast sandwich in all of St. Pete from Crooked Johnson. The chef makes artisanal house-made sausages along with biscuits and buns, and they are amazing. Today, we got the linguiça, which is a Portuguese sausage, and we also got the sausage biscuit. But as if we haven't shown you enough food, we want to show you another spot that we think you absolutely cannot miss and makes the best Cuban food out here, Pipos. Bodega is a really popular choice for a lot of tourists. I think it's right on Central Ave. They do make amazing Cubans, but if you really want like lo mejor, the best, you need to come to Pipos. This place has been here since 1979. It's now third generation owned and operated. It's just like a really awesome family run business. So today we are gonna to be trying what they are known for, which is the Cuban sandwich. They also have a beautiful mojo pork plate. Their mojo pork kind of put them on the map. And they also have the most delectable frito cubano. So this is like a burger and chorizo patty mixed. Then they layer with cheese, onion, and potato fries. This has won them a bunch of awards. They also have fried yuca here, but you can get so many different things. They have like this awesome hot bar that just has the freshest food for you to choose from. I could eat something new here every day. It's kind of off the beaten path. It's over in the Bay Pines area as you're heading to Seminole or headed toward the beaches. But I think it is well worth the detour if you want good Cuban food. Mm. It's so flavorful. It has like lots of citrus notes, tons of garlic. We're doing it right. And look at this black beans and rice, it's gorgeous. Decadence, dude. Decadence. Someone just walked in and said, I've heard you're the best Cuban food. Is it true? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. It has so much chorizo flavor. Mm. I've tried every single Cuban sandwich in the city of St. Petersburg, and this is the best one. <laughs> oh. So you've got the mojo pork, sliced deli ham, Swiss cheese, mayo, mustard, and pickles on a French baguette pressed. And that's another thing that a lot of places will get wrong is like the baguette crust will be super crunchy and thick and it'll be cutting your gums while you're trying to eat it. Nah, not here. This is so soft with the right amount of crunch. Oh. Ooh, I heard that crunch. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge Cuban fan. This is good. <laughs> this is really good. This right? is good. Most people who come here come for the beaches. St. Pete has been voted one of the best beaches in the world. There's Treasure Island, there's St. Pete Beach, which is home to the iconic and historic Pink Palace or the Don Cesar. We love the beaches. We don't come here often enough, often as locals. I'm sure you can ask some, but we like don't take advantage of the beauty we have in our backyard. Growing up, I used to come to the beaches all the time after high school. We would go out on the boats all the time, so the water and the beaches really do have a special place in my heart and every time I come out here I'm reminded of why everyone comes here to vacation because it is stunning. 
We are at one of our favorite beaches today. It has like the softest white sand and just miles of shoreline to enjoy. If you can get out on the water, I highly recommend it. There's some boat tours that you can hire. There's paragliding tours you can go out on, but getting out there and getting close to the dolphins and all the sea creatures is definitely a whole different experience than you can just get from the shoreline alone. But you have to come to the beach. It's a must, must, must if you're coming to St. Pete. <laughs> a great option for lunch is Casita Taqueria. It's a go-to for us. We love this spot. There's three of them throughout the city of St. Pete. They serve burritos, tacos, and it's kind of traditional, kind of Tex-Mex. Their queso is on point. Dennis always goes for the carnitas burrito. I went with three tacos today. I got a carnitas, Brussels sprout, which is one of their vegetarian options, and also chorizo. Mm. Mm. A little bit of crema on top so it's not too spicy. Mm. Is this a Mexican burrito? Of course not. But this is delicious. Hell yeah. This spot is always so good. Nothing finishes off a beach day like ice cream, but we have some really good ice cream spots here in St. Pete. Bright Eyes is one of our favorites well worth the drive if you're not nearby delicious but our favorite favorite is plant love they have one in downtown and now they have one in Gulfport, literally like a three minute bike ride from our house the best part is it's vegan we're not vegan but it's delicious so we don't care yeah it's delicious they have really funky flavors it's made from coconut milk which is easier on the stomach which is better for me let's be real i got cookie Crumble, I think is the name of it, and a pineapple upside down cake, and Dennis got like a golden latte with CBD in it. So Cracked red pepper, turmeric, and some other spices. Mm. So it's savory. Hey, don't you know my ice cream, girl? I'm just doing a few licks. Yeah, right. I'm busting at the seams. It's so good. The uh, dessert stomach's kicking in. Mm -hmm. You said you didn't want anything. <laughs> you need half of it. I'm good so Lord. full. <laughs> it's gonna look real good on the, it's gonna look real good on the internet. 